Hey everyone, welcome back to our MangoDB tutorial series. In this video, we will be focusing on how to create and manage databases, collections, and documents using the MangoDB Playground in Visual Studio Code. This approach is powerful and flexible, allowing you to write and execute MangoDB commands directly. If you haven't followed our previous tutorial, you can watch the video how to set up MangoDB and connect it to Visual Studio. You can find the link in the description box under this video. Now let's get started. To get started, let's open the MangoDB Playground. If you don't see the MangoDB icon on the left, ensure that the MangoDB extension is installed and visible in the activity bar. Right click on the activity bar and make sure to activate MangoDB. Click on it. Now the MongoDB icon is activated on the activity bar and you can see list of connections. If you have successfully connected to the local MongoDB server, you can see the green icon in the list of connections. Now let's create a new database in our local MongoDB server. Right click here, add database. Then the playground is open and you can see that playground is a JavaScript file that allow us to write our MongoDB query. Now that we have our playground ready, let's start by creating a new database. In MongoDB, a database is like a container that holds all of your collection and documents. To create a database, we use the use function. You first define the name of the database, for example, employee DB. Then to create and switch the database to employee DB, we use use function and specify the name of the database we define here. Once we create our new database, we can switch by running the playground. To run the playground, go to the top right corner of the playground and see that there is a run icon, click on it and then click yes. Now the result of the playground show us that switch it to the DB employee DB. All right. Now with our database setup, the next step is to create a collection. Think of a collection as a table in a relational database. It is where all your documents, your data will be stored. We're going to create a collection named employees. So this is a collection and we are going to use DB dot create collection function to create a collection in our database. Then specify the name of the collection we defined here. Then you can do this with the db.createCollection function. Once you create, you can run this playground and you can see that the database and the collection will be created in our local MongoDB server. So you can see the result that it is okay. Okay means that the collection is successfully created. Now let's refresh this and let's see our database is successfully created in our connection. So you can expand this and you can see employees collection is created as well. All right, now that we have our database and collection, it is time to start adding some data. In MongoDB, data is stored as documents in a JSON-like format. Let's begin by inserting a single document into the employees collection. Now that we have our database and collection, it is time to start adding some data. In MongoDB, data is stored as documents in a JSON-like format. Let's begin by inserting a single document into the employees collection. To insert, you can right-click on employees collection and insert doc. Here, db.getCollection function is used to get the name of the collection and insert one is a function that used to insert one document in our collection. Then you can specify the documents as a JSON format. Now to insert this document in our collections, we have to click on run and now our playground is successfully run and it's just inserted one document in our employees collection. You can check out by expanding this. First refresh and one document is successfully inserted in our employees doc collection. So this insert one function is useful to insert one document. 
To insert multiple documents at once, we use insert many instead of one. You can change this to many. You can insert many array of documents as a JSON format in employees collection at a time. So you can use square brackets that specifies each of the documents. For example, here, I'm going to create another JSON. You can copy this and you can change this to join data engineer and you can add more and you can put list of JSON documents in an array. Then this insert many function going to insert multiple documents at once. Now you can run this and see now just successfully inserted the documents in our employees and you can refresh our database. And now we have three documents in our employees collection, right? So this insert many commands will help you to insert multiple documents at a time. Next, once we have successfully created our documents in our employees collection, we can search or find or retrieve documents. To do this, you, you can right click on documents and search for documents. And you can see that find, for example, if I wanna find position with data engineer, and run this, there is no data engineer position right now. Uh, so you can make sure that there is a position with AI engineer. So you can right click here on the document, search for documents, and you can specify the position, which is AI engineer, and run this playground and see the retrieved result. Now AI engineer is retrieved. There are two records or documents in in the position of AI engineer. And one more thing you should understand here is the object ID. In a relational database, there is a primary ID that automatically created when you are inserting data into the relational database table. The same is true in MongoDB. This object ID uniquely identifies each of the documents you are inserting into the collections. When MongoDB inserts a document, it automatically adds a unique identifier called an object ID. This ID is stored in the underscore ID field and ensures each document can be uniquely identified within a collection. The object ID is a 12 byte identifier, typically displayed as a 24 character hexadecimal string. That's it for today's tutorial on managing databases and collections in MongoDB using the playground in Visual Studio Code. We have covered creating a database, adding collections, inserting single and multiple documents, and querying data. Be sure to run the commands and see the results in the output pane to verify your changes. In our next video, we will explore more advanced topics like aggregation and indexing. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. Happy coding.